All right, welcome everyone. I see people starting to trickle in. Glad everyone can make it. You'll probably hear me repeat this in a few times, but we'll, we'll let, give about two minutes for everyone to trickle in and get started. I'll be starting with just some basic logistics and then hand it over to, to Jeff. All right, again, we'll give it about two after, until about two after, till we uh, kind of officially get started. Uh, I'm Ken Salenza. We, I will just be helping out with some of the logistics and then hand it over to Jeff. All right, about one minute left to till we get officially kicked off here. Again, uh, just giving everyone a few few moments to trickle in, and then we'll get started. All right, let's get started. We, I think we hit, hit critical mass. So uh, we've um, we've already completed one webinar on using Batfish for uh, security. And in this webinar, we'll be uh, using Batfish for networking routing. Uh, actually have a, an actual full, full pipeline that, that Jeff is going to demonstrate. With that, uh, we'll, next slide, Jeff. We'll jump into introductions. Uh, I'm Ken Salenza. Uh, VP of Professional Services here at Network to Code, uh, traditional network engineer, full you know turned full time network automation engineer. Uh, when I came over to Network to Code uh, over six years ago now, Jeff, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Hi, Jeff Kayla. I'm a senior architect here at Network to Code. Uh, similar background to Ken. Started out network engineering. Uh, slowly started kind of getting an automation to see how I could speed up some of the stuff I was doing. And kind of over time, just became lover of an op open source, and uh, really became an automation enthusiast. I uh, have ten years' experience both enterprise and ISP environments. Awesome, thanks, Jeff. Uh, so we have several webinars uh, coming up, uh, including the one you're 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 viewing right now. Uh, we additionally had one. I will provide uh, in the chat several links here. Uh, this will be one of them, which is our our prior Batfish. Today we're doing, uh, as mentioned already, Batfish for networking routing verification. We're gonna be doing one on uh, September 22nd for firewall security automation with Nonobot, and then one on September 29th for network automation with Nonobot and IP Fabric. Um, so look at look on our Twitter to, file, to find the latest updates for uh, what specific times, what the, the links are gonna be to sign up, uh, et cetera, for those. Next slide. We also have some Batfish training coming up. Uh, it's going to be October 20th. And for those uh, here and watching, uh, the, the, the sign-up link is included here. I will also put it in chat here shortly. Uh, additionally, uh, for those watching this, you can use uh, this code this, uh, to get 50% off for said training. 
Okay, next slide. And th that's it from my perspective. I will be working in the background, uh, helping answering any questions while Jeff is going through the slides and demonstration that you're gonna see. Take it away, Jeff. Thank you, Ken. Hi, everyone. Again, thank you for uh, joining the webinar today. Uh, we're gonna talk uh, through the agenda here and we're gonna start by taking that high level approach of talking about uh, network change management. Uh, it's probably a topic we're all pretty familiar with, with the operational space and making configuration changes. So just touching on some of the complications with that and how network testing can actually help speed up delivery. We'll take some time to uh, do a quick introduction to Batfish. We'll talk about how you can get started with Batfish in just a few minutes. Um, and then we're going to go into the demo where I'm going to touch on quite a few different uh, checks and validations that we can do. And we'll show, as Ken mentioned previously, we do have a actual pipeline uh, for this webinar. I'll demonstrate what that looks like and what it looks like within GitHub. And then we'll also be demonstrating how we can do very similar uh, checks locally instead of using a GitHub or GitLab pipeline itself. So I'm gonna move into understanding network change management and talk about how complex it can be in certain environments. So I know with my background in ISP and large enterprise, change management becomes uh, quite a hassle uh, as far as getting quick changes done um, and getting implemented into an environment. There's a lot of steps that need to take place to validate that your change is accepted, your change is approved, and your change is not gonna cause any type of impact. Um, it's also heavily audited. Again, um, this just comes down to being able to have that audit trail for changes that are made to the network, understanding impacts, understanding if something does go wrong, uh, why it happened, and how we can uh, alleviate that in the future. And this is kind of getting into more of the uh, issues along, along the lines of how pre-change validation and validating your changes can actually help you is there's long approval stages with change management. You may put in a change control and you might have to go through three, four, five, six different lines of groups and individuals um, that need to approve it, need to validate what you're doing, and then get you scheduled um, into the change control calendar. So with that being said, uh, each time you go through that process, especially with change controls that potentially fail because a validation wasn't able to be done beforehand, it's just uh, greatly extending um, it's just greatly extending how long it takes to deliver a project, deliver a change to the network. You have complicated MOPs, complicated, complicated validations and backout procedures. How do I get to the point where I can test these changes and be confident in the changes I'm making are not going to cause impact and ideally would never need a backout procedure at all? And finally, kind of going back to what I mentioned before, it's just difficult to get that scheduled. There may be very specific change windows for certain environments. Maybe your data centers are only, uh, you know, after midnight. Maybe you have certain customer sites that have very strict requirements to only allow changes on one week in the month. You can see how that could greatly extend the amount of time um, a project and or a change gets uh, to take to get implemented uh, into an environment. So that's kind of what the, the goal of this webinar is, is to show you how doing your pre-change validation um, can really save you time and avoid you having to go through a change management process multiple times to implement just a single change. Going into a quick introduction of Batfish um, and just to take one step back here, I will say I'm going to go through the next two or three slides a little bit quicker. But if you want a more detailed analysis of these slides, uh, please visit the webinar we did on security where I took a little bit longer to uh, go into the weeds on some of these. So what is Batfish? Uh, Batfish is a network validation tool that provides security reliability and um, complex analysis by looking at configurations. So Batfish builds a representation and essentially models uh, network behavior 
based on device configurations. So one thing to keep in mind about this is Batfish does not need direct access to network devices, which is super powerful. Um, it's not something that you need beyond backup configurations that in most environments you already have a solution for. Another great part about Batfish is the vendors that it already supports. So there's full support for Arista, F5, Cisco, Juniper, and Palo Alto. And there's many more in development. Uh, for example, Fortinet is in development and um, is getting implemented uh, currently. So how do we get started with Batfish? Uh, step one. Batfish is just a job application. And it's again, it takes configurations and it takes those configurations and packages them into what they call network snapshots. And these network snapshots will be used to convert those configurations into a vendor independent data model. And that data model builds out that representation of the network. It, it does control plane, it builds out BGP relationships and OSPF neighbor relationships, builds out your routing tables, et cetera. And then you have those models now to query against and ask Batfish questions on those models. For example, today we'll be talking about one where we're getting, specific, we're getting routes from a network node. Say, I want all the, all the routes in the routing table for this network node. And again, the great uh, part about this is we never had to have direct access to the network device itself. We just needed a backup. Finally, how do you actually query against Batfish? And you can do that with a Python SDK called PyBatfish. And PyBatfish gives you that ability to query the job applications, REST APIs, and pull back data and structured data and be able to parse it how you want to. So how do we get started? Uh, with Batfish in just minutes. It's very simple because Batfish comes uh, with the ability to, or uh, sorry, it, Batfish comes um, packaged in a Docker container. And it's very easy to grab off of Docker Hub. They do have two different variants of the uh, Docker container. One is an all-in-one, which comes, um, with Jupyter Notebooks. And those notebooks give you a lot of examples, a lot of helper functionalities, and you can access it directly on a specific port, in this case, uh, port 8888. And you can run through uh, and, and kind of get started with Batfish. So I'd say if you're getting started with Batfish, getting hands-on, definitely recommend uh, getting started with the all-in-one container. The other option is what we'll be sh uh, showing you today is just Batfish uh, standalone. And you, you can uh, use that in CI CD pipelines like we're going to, or you can use that if you are familiar with Batfish and um, you don't necessarily need the Jupyter notebooks while you're doing your while you're doing your demonstrations. So let's talk about what does a network pipeline look like and how a network engineer and how really network teams in general can use this pipeline to validate their changes to the network. First thing you're going to have to be familiar with is Git and kind of having your Git workflow and understanding a Git workflow. So you typically have your main branch or your production branch of code. And the first thing you're going to do is actually create a branch, a feature branch or, or a change branch off of that uh, using Git. And then the next thing you're going to do is go into your actual code base, and maybe you have a new feature that you need to add a new uh, Jinja 2 template to, so you can generate your configurations. Or maybe your templates are all fine, but you have a new route you need to add to the network. You need to change a BGP neighbor relationship, et cetera. And what you're going to do there is inside of that feature branch in Git, you're going to make your few changes to your templates or your YAML data. Once you do that, you're going to use perhaps a tool like Ansible um, or even uh, Nautobot you can use within Golden Config plugin to generate your configurations. And then you're going to check those new configurations into Git. Finally, this is the part where Batfish comes into play. Let's test our configurations. 
We can use GitHub Actions. You can use uh, GitLab CI pipelines. You can use uh, the same with Bitbucket, et cetera. And you can do more than just validating your um, the network models. You can also validate your, your schema, making sure that the schema uh, aligns with what your, your company's goals are. You can validate that your YAML formatting is, is correct and accurate with like something like YAML. Lib. And then finally, you can do your final validations um, with Batfish itself to make sure that the configuration changes that you're going to implement are successful and they meet any of the criteria that you have specified. Finally, that you're going to create a pull request and that pull request will be from the feature branch into your production branch. And then you can deploy those changes once all of your pipelines have passed. One important thing here is each step shown by the arrows is iterative and it can be repeated and redone many times. Maybe it gets to your peer review and your peer is actually saying, no, actually that was supposed to be a different uh, BGP ASN number. So you can go back through, update your Git branch and continue to go um, through the process that way. So we're going to jump right into the demo today. A um, little bit shorter on the slide material today, but uh, quite a few different demos that I want to demonstrate. So I'll let Ken drop the link here into the chat. Uh, this demo, it's a public repo. Feel free to clone it down and play around with it uh, as I go. And you'll see the Batfish security from our previous webinar is in that same repo as well. So let's talk about the checks and the demos that we're going to be showing today. So first of all, we want to analyze routing protocols with Batfish. How do we do that? Uh, I'm going to demonstrate these ones that are highlighted in orange here, the BGP session status and compatibility, as well as OSPF session compatibility and statuses. So the great thing about Batfish is there's already quite a bit of these that have uh, pre-built assertions that can be used directly. Uh, within your testing infrastructure without you having to do anything. You can have PyBatfish query and you can and you can um, literally query that no BGP neighbor is unestablished. Um, so for instance, BGP session status. This is must validate BGP sessions are in the established state. So uh, this is a great check to do, assuming you have cleaned configurations where you know all of your uh, BGP sessions should already be up should always be up, I should say. Session compatibility is a little bit different. Maybe you have a rem uh, remote AS mismatch and BGP is configured, but it actually cannot come up because of the way that the configuration is currently built. This is another very powerful one, especially when you're changing or updating BGP neighbors. Maybe you fat fingered something in your configuration. This will tell you that there's no way this BGP session can come up. And finally, what, uh, the last one I'll be demoing today is uh, around OSPF session compatibility. It's very similar to the BGP one. This is configuration for an OSPF neighborship cannot come up because there is a problem with the configuration. Uh, an example here would be like an area mismatch. So I'm gonna jump into VS Code now, and I'm gonna demonstrate these three. And then we'll kind of jump into the final section, which is going to be about kind of a custom query and really using your own uh, businesses requirements to create queries that make sense for your company. Okay. So to start here, um, you can see I've already have the repo cloned down. I'm in the production branch, which is in our case is the main branch. And I have, this is my test file here, but I also have everything else from my configuration generation. So what I'm going to do is to demonstrate the uh, BGP unestablished question. I'm actually going to come in here and I'm just going to update my host bars. And I'm going to say, I need to add another route to this ISP router. So I made my change. I'm going to create a feature branch. Okay. 
And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and commit my changes. So I'm going to run through this pretty quickly here. And I will explain it once the pipeline kicks off within Git. Gonna grab my key here. Okay, so I just pushed up my feature branch up to Git. Let me hop over to Git here really quick. And you will see if I reload my page. I'm going to create my pull request, as I mentioned before. I'll just leave that for simplicity's sake. You can see my file that changed exactly what we changed there, and I'll create a pull request. So what this is going to do is I have my CI build. It's going to go ahead and build my application. It's going to see that I have my CI checks that are required for this. It's going to go ahead and check out the repository. And the way this works is it's actually going to use those host var files. So it's going to see, pick up that change. It's going to regenerate all my configurations. And then it's going to pass those new configurations into Batfish and actually run through a list of tests that I've created. And in this case, once it gets there, And while that's kind of running through, I'll, I'll quickly show what the CI file looks like. You can see it's pretty simple. We have our workflow here um, on pull requests into certain branches. We're going to run this check. And then we have pretty simple checks that we're looking for. We're going to check out the code repository. We're going to install all the necessary packages. And then we're going to build our environment. We are using Docker in this case, so it's going to build a container for our config gen application. And then it's also going to use Docker Compose to turn up the Batfish container. And then it'll run YAML lint. And then it'll go through generating configurations and testing the configurations. So it's continuing here. You'll see it's generating the configurations now. So again, it's taking those host bar files using Ansible creating the configurations. You can see we changed the ISP configuration and now it's coming in to test the configurations. And you can see here, this pipeline actually failed. And the reason it failed shows you right here. That PyBatfish, really the assertion that I made is that I should have no un unestablished BGP sessions. And you can see it failed because there's actually two that are not established. So that's exactly the type of thing that we wanna check before we would ever deploy this to production infrastructure. This could have caused a huge outage. And instead we're catching this before the change ever gets implemented. So to kind of jump back into the code, I want to finally kind of demonstrate what we can do to speed up that uh, delivery kind of locally. So that took a few seconds. We had to make a pull request. We had to push it into Git, and we had to uh, wait for the Git pipeline to actually fail. But what if I want to be able to do the exact same checks that Git, uh, the CI pipeline is doing, but do them locally? And in order to do that, we can actually use some of our invoke tasks. So you can see here, if I do invoke list, I have a few different tasks here. Um, and I'm actually going to say I want to do invoke tests. And invoke test is exactly what the CI pipeline is actually running. So you'll see here, it's going to be much quicker. We should get the exact same failure that we got. And then we'll talk through how to fix those. So you can see here, made the change starts it in the exact same failure. So much quicker, I'm able to test locally, make sure the changes that I'm doing um, before I ever even push it into Git are passing. And that just makes the entire pipeline a little bit quicker. 
So that demonstrated what it would look like if our specific BGP sessions did not actually come back up. What does incompatible BGP sessions look like? But for that, I'm actually going to come in here and say I was in here and I just fat fingered uh, the remote AS. And again, now I can come in here and simply run my invoke test. I made my changes to my files. I want to regenerate the configurations, but then I want to test the configurations before I actually push them into Git. You can see the configuration was updated. It's going to create a new snapshot. And again, you can see, no, you have incompatible BGP sessions. They're half open. And that's because the remote AS doesn't actually line up with what it's expected in order to actually bring up that BGP session. So this is slightly different than unestablished. Unestablished is all the configurations for BGP are there and they are um, and they are accurate and they're correct. This one's your configurations itself are actually wrong and this BGP session cannot come up. So I'm going to revert those. And reverted that. So what I'm going to do here is just do my invoke test. I'm back to my kind of my sunny day scenario. And in my sunny day scenario, you'll see all of the tests are going to pass. So I updated my configurations. It's going to run through those tests again. And you can see this time I validated all my um, my sessions with BGP and OSPF are good. And then I'll be talking about these shortly as far as more of a custom query. So the final one I want to show is really quickly is just what it was look like if you messed up an OSPF session. So again, what if I fat fingered the OSPF area here in my edge device? You'll see as that runs very similar, it's going to update the configurations and then it's going to run through the test. A little bit slower this time. Okay, great. You can see here it found OSPF sessions that were not established, but they were expected to be uh, established. So what we've shown so far, we create a, se a session. This is my test file. This is my where my actual test code lives. And as I mentioned previously, a lot of these already have pre-built assertions that batfish pie batfish comes with natively and that's these three that i just demonstrated here and all i'm doing is in my test i'm running through each one of those uh independently so i'm going to run back over to the slides and we'll kind of move into talking about the path analysis and then how this actually becomes part of our custom query on the next slide. So those were those were pretty simple tests. We wanted to validate that all of our sessions are good, they're up, they're established as expected. But what if I have some business requirements that, that I need to validate? So Batfish also comes with the ability to do trace routes and bidirectional trace routes. And those will actually validate traffic and routing between a source and destination. So the great thing about this is this is not just doing an ICMP trace route. This is going hop by hop, doing routing analysis, picking the correct route, and, and kind of going through an actual routing table lookup at each step. So I'm going to do that within my creating custom queries with that fish. So this will be the final thing I demo, and this will be a little bit more um, in depth and probably really open up your imagination to what you could do inside of your environment. So if I want to create custom checks or uh, custom tests that I want to run against my, my own configurations before I ever do any deployments, there's a number of questions that you need to ask yourself and really probably within your network engineering team and your operations team. 
So let's take a step back and determine the validations that we care about. What are the business requirements that we want to check and that we always want to validate are true before we do any type of configuration change? The next thing you're going to want to do is actually develop your custom queries. Get your hands into the into the Python code, into the PyBatfish. Use all the assertions that are pre-built, but that does not stop you from creating custom Python queries to do specific checks. And finally, you want to implement those checks into a CI-CD pipeline. So what I'm going to do here is kind of demonstrate an example of what I see as like a custom query or a custom test in, in Batfish. So in my example, I'm saying I have three unique checks that I have in my environment that I want to test alongside the other checks that we've already done. I want to make sure my desktop pod has no routes to the security uh, servers. I want to make sure that my DNS route is an OSPF E2 route from the desktop pod. And finally, I want to make sure that all of my edge routers have their BGP session established to the ISP endpoint. So I'm gonna jump back in over here and show you the code for that. You can see it's pretty simple as well. The code itself, I have it listed here, the three things that I wanted to check. You can see for more of the custom assertions that I don't that are not already built in PyBatfish, we can use some of the questions that Batfish comes with natively, for instance, routes. So what this is doing is it's grabbing all of the routes from all the routing tables from the configurations that that fish snapshot has and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to tackle the no routes to security servers and i'm going to say i want to look through all of those batfish routes that i have and i want to make sure that this expected route does not exist in this specific node so again this goes along with checking maybe you have specific hardened environments that not everyone needs access to or shouldn't even be routed to. This is what you could check here. And for CI to fail properly, all I'm doing here is if the result is false, then it's going to use an exit code and that exit code will make the CI pipeline fail. Otherwise, I'm just doing a very simple print statement. The next check that I wanted to do was make sure that my routes to DNS from my desktop pod are OSPF E2 routes. Now, maybe this is a little bit of a, you know, a high level check that you probably wouldn't necessarily care about, but I wanted just to demonstrate the power of Batfish and what you can do with your validations. So for that, I'm actually, again, looking at the routes, but this time I'm passing in nodes and saying my two switch nodes, which are my kind of my access switches for my desktop pod, I want to look for routes that go to network 8888 slash 32. And if I basically do a, a, an additional check where I'm checking the protocol of each one of those, and all of them should equal OSPF E2. If they don't, it's going to fail. If they do, it'll pass that check. And finally, I'm checking that all my edge nodes have an IS, uh, have a BGP neighbor relationship to all of my remote ISP nodes. And you can see here, I'm asserting a number of results. I have two edges going to one ISP router just to kind of mimic an ISP relationship. And I'm asserting the number of responses here is going to be exactly two. So again, <clears throat> I'm going to revert this change. And I'm going to run my test. Updated the configurations, passing it back into Batfish to create the snapshot. You can see this time, here's the initial three chest, uh, checks that we did. Those are still good. The test from the desktop pod to DNS has passed now. Desktop pods have no routes to the security servers, exactly what we wanted to check. And there's always at least uh, one BGP towards ISP in established state, and that passed as well. So it says all tests have passed. I now have the ability to go and in this case,
quickly come in here. And now that I've taken my time, I submitted my PR. My PR actually failed the checks. I went through locally, figured out the changes that I wanted to make to fix the pipeline and uh, pushed up my fixes so that now the pipeline will pass. And now I could start the re uh, PR review process. So take some time, go ahead and put any questions you have um, into the chat. That's kind of what we have for today. And the final thing I'll demonstrate here is just that if we go back to GitHub now, kind of let this run on the side while we get to questions. And then uh, after questions, we have some resources to cover. And then we have a, a nice um, summary slide for what actual queries we made to uh, incorporate these changes into our pipeline. Awesome, Jeff, great job. <clears throat> um, I will go through the questions um have been sent mostly through the chat uh i believe i have them all answered so you know uh uh chat keep them coming keep them coming uh but i'll go through in the meantime and just have you kind of confirm uh so one of the last questions was uh does batfish support cisco i uh, cisco aci uh answers not currently i i, I reviewed and verified with folks of batfish um Second, another question was, does Batfish have constraints for GenoS configuration files, i.e. set versus hierarchical, et cetera? And it is ex the expected, the expected uh, configuration, it should be in the, the set format. Okay, uh, just got a question in. Uh, should we write that script uh, in Python or do we use uh, Ansible Batfish plugin? Thanks. Um, I'm not familiar, I'm not sure if you are, Jeff, with what capabilities Ansible uh, gives you so I'll... yeah batfish has its own role available in galaxy that does have a lot of these same assertions so i think it really depends on what type of pipeline you want to run with whether you want to run uh like we did with with python and, and pi batfish or if you're more comfortable using uh the batfish role but honestly it, it's really up to your environment it's as simple as updating your ci files to use you know, instead of calling a, a Python script, you could test with uh, Ansible playbook as well. And I will provide further clarity on the GenoS configuration set um, being in set. It, it will um, automatically convert hierarchical into set uh, as well. So um, the uh, next question was sent was, could we assert that two connected trunk interfaces don't have ma mismatched tag VLANs. Um, I believe I, I have um, uh, where tools kind enough to answer some questions in the background. I believe there's going to be an issue with you having to see the physical interfaces to identify that. But do, do you know that uh, off, off of Jeff? No, I don't know that one off the top of my head. I think that'd be a good, a good one to write out. Um, and, and, you know, from, from just thinking about it, the data would be within Batfish. So I think it would definitely be a custom query you'd have to write. Um, okay. But I would think it would be available. Got it. Yeah. And that's that's what Ratul's saying. It says there is a, a interface properties um, that would have the information that you require to build the query yourself. So that goes to what, what Jeff mentioned before, which is there are some things out of the box we can just say, hey, this is true for everyone. And there's some things that they, they just provide you with the model and the ability to query it because your one organization say, I don't want to be able to reach the internet from here. The other organization is not going to obviously have that, that same, same, um, uh, same requirements. Okay. Uh, next one I see is, um, uh, Bathurst versus Pi ATS. Can you do the same things with both or do they fill different testing goals? They definitely fulfill different, uh, uh, testing goals. Um, Pi ATS or Genie um, is parsing, by and large, parsing operational data. Um, and Batfish um, kind of, uh, you know, I, I think there are some circumstances where they may parse some configuration data, but it's really not the, the primary use case. Additionally, uh, Batfish parses configuration, but that's not its main goal. It parses configuration in support of the larger goal, which is 
to provide the query language of that parsed configuration. That's kind of the barrier of entry as opposed to the goal, uh, which I would say PyTS or Jenny is, is different. Jeff, any, any, you agree? Any further clarification? Yeah. yeah, I think you got that one spot on. I would just say that just remember that Batfish does parse the configurations, but to create the entire network data model versus what you're saying, we're just parsing the configuration to be able to query it. Okay, another good one. Uh, in order to use Batfish, do we need to generate the full configuration before pushing to the device? For example, can we use it when pushing single bits of configuration with Ansible and not the full config? It's only going to be relevant to the queries you're going to build. Uh, and 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 Batfish uh, has you know um, the capabilities to indicate which configurations are being parsed and are not. Not all configurations are being parsed. Uh, I, you know maybe this is not true, but let's just say the NTP configurations aren't parsed. Right, there may be no reasonable query that that's required from that. Uh, that example may or may not be accurate, um, but the point still stands, which is it, it's used in support of uh, all the queries that that you have, uh, and and the, the the properties as well as I guess the queries uh, that come out of the box. Right, so as as Jeff already mentioned, uh, you have some things like our is BGP established, which is just kind of out of the box already there. Okay, some, some good questions there. Um, I am neglecting the name, but I, I believe there was something, there was a, a project just released recently for Patfish. Maybe I'll go quickly. I think actually even told you, if I recall correctly, it would explain to you which parts of your configuration is modeled versus not. Yes. Yeah, called netcove yeah so maybe just a plug i'll i'll, I'll include, the, include the link uh here kind of expand on that as well ken um there is an actual pie batfish question as well to see any of those configuration lines that are not currently supported so they support the lines that they need in order to build the data model that's currently um that's currently implemented and then you know more can be added as as needed. I'll kind of throw up the references as well uh, while we're going through any final questions. Yeah, great point. Additionally, uh, included in in this deck um, is that there is uh, if you go to the next slide, we just kind of pulled out some of the queries, just kind of like um, uh, a little bit more succinct, kind of the more interesting parts that you would uh, run locally. Okay, uh, got another question. How would you uh, approach controller-based networks like Cisco SD-WAN and the rendering of the actual configuration is done within the controller? Uh, we had a similar question last time. Um, you know, there would have to be a um, some kind of construct to uh, provide the model. So whether that's API calls or you know, uh, decompressing a binary file of some sort, uh, from a technology perspective, it is um, not unfeasible, uh, and and again, I'll, I'll, I'll further retell to uh, ping me if I'm incorrect here. But um, th there are the current use cases, uh, and, and by use cases, I mean the, the supported vendors do not include include uh, these things. Now there are. It's worth noting that um, there are instances where you have like a column domain managers where it has configuration. You may only use the UI, but there's still some configuration in the background. And those would obviously be be usable as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Just just say uh, a okay. Yeah. One one question that was asked, uh, Jeff, was is there any in integration for um, uh, with Nodabot to Batfish? Uh, just the way Jeff used uh, Ansible to generate the configurations, we have kind of thrown around the idea of using. Uh, golden config to generate it and kind of more closely integrate with Batfish. Uh, so that's being that's being uh, uh, explored. And we just kind of got a thumbs up here as well with that. Okay, uh, one, one more. Uh, oh, just a just a kudos. So <laughs> awesome. Yeah, just a kudos saying thanks, Jeff and Ken. A lot of uh, good stuff and great mix of demo and info. So I think we will, we're just about on time anyway. So if any last minute questions come in, otherwise we'll probably call it.
All right. Awesome. I think that will do it. I appreciate it. Well done, Jeff. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.